The Classic TV Channel is your happy trails to golden oldies television. From the 1940s through the formative years of the 1950s and 60s. Enjoy restored TV shows, Mickey Rooney Show, Groucho Marx, Trouble with Father, Terry and the Pirates, One Step Beyond, Beverly Hillbillies, Bonanza, The Lucy Show, Dick Van Dyke, Annie Oakley, Ozzy and Harriet, The Howdy Doody Show, and many, many more. Binge your night away. <clears throat> so return with us now to those golden days of yesteryear. What you're about to see is a real-life story, taken from the files of the police racket and bunco squads, business protective associations, and similar sources all over the country. It is intended to expose the confidence game, the carefully worked out frauds by which confidence men take more money each year from the American public than all the bank robbers and thugs with their violence. Captain Braddock, ready. Tonight I'm going to tell you a story that's a little different from the ones you've been seeing. It exposes a racket just as the others have done. And it's a nasty racket that takes hard-earned money from honest people and puts it into the pockets of thieves. But still it's a different story. First, because it's a Christmas story. And second, because it put me on a spot I never want to be put on again. I had to arrest Santa Claus. Now, the story begins a few days before Christmas, over in the tenement district, where an old man named Charles Dooley lived alone with his dog. But he hardly ever wanted for human company. Hi, children. Want to play, Mr. Dooley? Well, of course. I always want to play. Let's play Johnny on the Pony. Okay, okay, we play that. We... Wait a minute, what's Johnny on the Pony? You get down on the floor and we all jump on you. Yeah! yeah. No, sir. That's another name for razzle-dazzle. You don't catch me in that again. What's the matter, Mr. Dooley? Can't you take it? What do you mean? Your Uncle Dooley's strong as an ox. Mm. Feel that muscle there, huh? Mush. I'm Mush. 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 I'll I'll mush you, you. Come on. Let's play Father the Leader. I like Uncle Dooley. He's teaching. Read to me, Uncle Dooley. Will you please? Well, of course I will, darling. I'll certainly read to you. Yeah, reading don't take no muscles. Oh, you. And you know, I've got a special story. I've been saving it just for you. A visit from St. Nicholas. How's that? Uh, it sounds like a lot of bunk to me. Oh, Grover, I'm ashamed of you. Now, come on, kids. Sit down here and all be quiet. That's right. And, Monster, this is for you, too. You sit there and be quiet like the rest of them. All right, here we go. It was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in the hope that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. But I heard him exclaim ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. St. Nicholas? Who's he? Why, St. Nicholas? That's, that's Santa Claus, who brings presents to good children every year. Yeah, us kids never get Christmas presents. Oh, of course you do. You uh, Didn't you get anything last year? Sure. My mom had my shoes resold. <laughs> I got vitamin pills. See what I mean? Yeah, I, I see what you mean. Uh, well, uh, maybe that was because you didn't write to him. You have to write to him? Well, of course you do. How else would he know what you wanted? Now he tells us. I don't know how to write, Uncle Dooley. Would you write for me? Well, of course I would, Princess. I'd... Me too. Me, me too. No, no, 
now, now, wait a minute, children. It, it, it's, it's pretty late to ride to Santa Claus this year, you see, because he lives clear up at the North Pole, and, and that's an awful long, long way away. What's the matter with their mail? Uh, no, there's nothing the matter with the airmail. Um, all right. Maybe there really is a Santa Claus now. Well, of course there's a Santa Claus. Then we'll get everything we ask for. Oh, now, 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 no, no. wait a minute, wait a minute. That depends. That, de that depends on how good you are, and, and it depends on how busy Santa Claus is, and, and well, that depends on a lot of things. But I, I guarantee you this, you all will get some presents. Now, come on, tell me one at a time, what would you like? What? Electric train, boxing gloves, coaster, watch. Oh, good evening, Miss Scarpita. Won't you, won't you come in and sit down, please? Oh, no, thank you. I'll be just a minute. Mr. Dooley, the other parents, they sent me to see you about, well, about telling the children that they're going to get Christmas presents. I know you mean well, Mr. Dooley, but it's a terrible problem for us. Of course it isn't. Me and my big mouth. It, it's only because they didn't get any presents last year and... Oh, they get few little things. Things they can wear. That's all the families can afford. But now, now they expect very expensive presents. We don't know what to do about it. Well, look, I'll, I'll talk to them again and I'll... I'll... No, wait a minute. I'll, I'll figure something out, because, honest, I'd, I'd rather lose my right arm and see those kids disappointed. Oh, don't be too upset, Mr. Dooley. Children forget their disappointments quickly, and they bounce back much quicker than grown-ups do, eh? Yeah, well, of course, Christmas time for joy, not for disappointment. Well, I gotta go now. It's way past Anna Maria's bedtime. Oh. Anna Maria said to say good night. Oh, she's my little sweetheart. You say good night for me. I will. <laughs> good night, Mr. Dooley, eh? Good night. Hey, monster. Monster. I've got it. I've got it. Mm. Lumbago or no lumbago, I'm going to get a job the next few days and earn the money. That's what I'll do. Here we are. Help wanted mail. Dishwasher. No, oh, I can do that. A dish... No. Has to be under 50. Here. Here's something. Elderly men. Elderly men. You can earn extra money for Christmas. Easy work. Apply at once to the U Tide Agency, 409 East 23rd Street. Oh, excuse me. Did, did you advertise in the paper for... Oh, yes. Uh, step right in. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dooley. Charles Evans Dooley. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Dooley? I'm Mr. Smith, and this is my partner, Mr. Jones. How do you do, Mr. Hello, Dooley? Mr. Jones, I'm happy to uh, sit down. Thank you very much. I, uh, well, I, I certainly would be interested in some of that extra Christmas money that you mentioned in the ad. I think we might be able to do something for you there. What do you say, Elmer? Well, I think he'll do dressed up. Uh, sure. uh, dressed up? What would I have to do? Well, uh, you know these uh, Santa Clauses you see on the streets during Christmas time, you know, the ones with the big pots? Yeah, oh, well, now, you shouldn't make fun of a man because he's a little fat because I'm... <laughs> <laughs> no, well, well, he, he means uh, an iron kettle to collect money for charity. Oh, oh, I didn't... <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, we supply these Santa Clauses for the various charities around town. Oh, oh well, you, you mean I'd be the jolly little fat man with the bell? And, oh, now, look, watch. <clears throat> Jingle, jingle, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. <laughs> what do you say, Elmer? Well, I think you'll be all right, Ross. <laughs> oh, how much money would I earn, sir? Well, the usual salary, $10 a day. $10 a day? Oh, that's wonderful. I, I didn't expect to earn that much. And a bonus, if your daily collections are good. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll have the money rolling in, gentlemen. <laughs> uh, oh, gee, it sure be good going home every night with some money in my pocket. Well, uh, not every night, Mr. Dooley. You see, these charities you and uh, our other Santa Clauses work for, why, they uh, pay when your work is finished, on Christmas Eve. Oh, on Christmas... Oh, that's all right. That's all right. As long as I have time to do some important shopping before the stores close. Just be here Christmas Eve, 7 o'clock sharp, with your Santa Claus suit and kettle. You'll get your money. Uh, seven o'clock with his suit and the kettle. Of... <laughs> I'll be here ringing my bell. <laughs> now, hey, get him a suit, Elmer. Now, uh, Mr. Dooley, just for our records here, I'd uh, I'd like to have your address, please. Oh yes. 
214 East Bronson. Yeah, I think you ought to fit into this, all right? Oh, oh I'll fit into that, all right. You see. Look, I can... Oh. Merry Christmas! Oh, 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 Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, something for the deserving children. Thank you and bless you. Merry Christmas, Jingle Bells. <laughs> Society oh. for the deserving poor children, eh? That's correct, sir. Merry... Who put you out here? Why, I belong out here. I'm Santa Claus. Oh, 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 oh. I'm very serious about this. Who are you working for? Why, I work for all the deserving children in the world. You know, Christmas is made for children, sir. You won't regret what you've given. Thank you very much and Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. Well, what do you think of that, monster? A doubting Thomas. Oh, 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 oh. Merry Christmas. Give something, gentlemen, would you like to give something to the dessert? Oh, hello, Mr. Smith. How, how, how am I doing, huh? It's pretty good? Mr. Dooley, you're going to have to work a lot harder if you want to get that extra bonus. Oh. Now, you're falling way behind all the rest of our other Santa Clauses. I am. Right? you got to snap out of it, you know. Show some enthusiasm. Oh. You know, keep ringing that bell. That's yes. what brings the money in. Well, I, I will. I, I've been ringing it. All right, here, open well. it up. Yes. Well, I'll, I'll do better tomorrow. I, I promise you I will. I'll... I'll, I'll be the top Santa Claus. You see if I'm not. All right, you better be. I want you to be. I want you to get a nice, big, fat bonus. Yeah. Come on, open it. All right, sir. There you are. Uh, I thought that was pretty good, but I'll keep ringing. I tried to find out something about the charity this bogus Santa Claus was working for. And he gave me nothing but that ho, ho, ho business. I'm Santa Claus. Like I was a child. I'd say that he was senile, except for the fact that he seemed smart enough to work a vicious racket. And you're sure there's no such charity as the Society for Deserving Children? Captain Braddock, as chairman of the Conference of Organized Charities in this city, I'm positive there is no such society. Then it's a racket, no doubt about that. You've got to get that old man off the street, Captain. Yes, but whoever put that old man there may be doing this thing on a large scale with a whole slew of old men out on the streets. Now, that's an angle worth considering. It's vicious. Giving legitimate charities a black eye. I never dreamed such a thing could happen. It's the first time I've heard of it too, Mr. Hastings, and I've heard of a lot of contemptible rackets. Excuse me. Steve? Yes? Get me six men on plain clothes detail for tomorrow morning first thing. Yes, sir. Thanks. You'll be doing the legitimate charities a great favor, Captain Braddock. I know, and I'm going on this thing myself, Mr. Hastings, to supervise it personally. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night. Your last day to give something to the deserving children? Jingle Bells last day, folks. Remember the deserving children. Jingle Bells, everyone. Mer hello, hello, Mr. Smith. Oh, look here. You're going to be proud of me today. But I, I couldn't have done it without the monster here. <laughs> Open it up. Stamp it up, will you? Oh, I don't will. I guess I'll get my bonus all right, huh? Come on, hurry up. There we are, there we are. There, there we are. We, we will get the bonus, won't we? Sure. Uh, listen. Uh... Lock it up and bring the whole thing up to the office right away. Lock it up and bring up to your office right away. All, all right, I will. We're going to get our bonus. We're going to get... Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. across the street. Let's take a ride downtown. What for? Look, mister, don't play innocent. I am innocent. I'm just an honest businessman on his way home from work. I think you got the wrong party. What's in that briefcase? Open it up. Look, not a thing. I'm telling you, you got the wrong party. Then you can sue us and the city, too. What do you want? 
Clean up the office. Later. Come back later, will you? Don't get sold, Mr. Castle. Anything wrong? Go on, will you? Is business bad? No. What kind of business you fellas in? We build fires for people to throw logs on. Oh, yes, sir. Yes. Your name, Castle? What is it? Police officer. Well, uh, I'm, I'm just uh, visiting here, officer. You see, uh... That's Castle, all right. I know there's something crooked about this business. You better hold him. Padlock. What do you keep in the drawer? Like I said, this is my office. That man's lying. Open it. You want me to make you open it? Pull it out. All the way. Sweet charity. All right, take it out and carry it. It's too heavy. For a big, strong boy like you? Oh, for shame. Down, Rover. Now on the double. Your partner's getting lonesome. Oh, phew. I never walked so far in all my life. Oh, my. Come on, monster, sit down. Either the two gentlemen in? Nope. Well, that's funny. They, they should be. They should be in jail, and that's where they are. Jail? What for? Well, the way I figured it out, those two was running a phony Santa Claus racket, keeping the money still turning it over to charity. Oh, no. No. You don't, you don't mean that, do you? Yes, sir. But, but, but that money I collected was for charity. It, it was for the deserving children. Merry Christmas to all the deserving children. But... All the crooks. The dirty crooks. I'll bet you they never even expected to pay me a penny either, let alone a bonus. Oh, but my money. I, I've got to get my money to, to buy presents for the kids. What am, what am I going to do about the kids? Don't look at me. I've got my own kids to worry about. But I... Why not? Why not? What are you going to do now? This money was collected for deserving children, wasn't it? Well, the kids that I'm buying presents for are deserving children. They're the gosh darnest deserving kids in this town. Right. And I'm going to get to them before the stores are closed. Yes. yes. Thank you very much. You bet you my kids are as deserving as any. Here, you've got some deserving kids, too. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you. And, Monster, it's going to be a Merry Christmas. I'll tell you that. Now, uh, you say in this confession that you picked up the money from the kettles every night. What happened to the money you took in today? I left mine in that drawer. I mean you, Pennington. One of the old men's got it, uh, Mr. Dooley. I dumped the whole day's take into his kettle and told him to take it right up to the office. Steve, has Joe come in yet? He's on his way in, sir. Good. Chief, there's no sign of old man Dooley up at that office. But get this. I saw the janitor, and he told me that the old man made off of the dough. How do you like that? I don't. We'd better pick him up, too, Joe. Oh, you said you had the names and addresses of all the old men who work for you. Where does Dooley live? Here's something your boys missed. Oh, here it is. 214 East Bronson. Now, everybody be quiet, eh? Santa Claus has taken all the presents to Mr. Dooley's room. And as soon as we hear the bell, it means that he has come. Oh, there he is now. Merry Christmas, everyone. Hello, children. Merry Christmas. Presents for everyone. Come on, darling. Presents for everyone. Where's my Uncle Dooley? Oh, your Uncle Dooley, darling. He's up on the roof. He's holding my reindeer for me. But he'll be right back. That's Gee. Then you're really Santa Claus? Well, of course I'm Santa Claus in the all-too-corpulent flesh. Ho, 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 ho. But don't you want to hear about your presents? Yeah. Well, I I've got a list somewhere. If I can only find that list, I... That's it. That's my list. Now, let me read this out. Uh-huh. Excuse me, is that Mr. Charles Dooley? Yes. Isn't he wonderful? 
Now, let me see. And, oh, this I remember. Anna Marie, you wanted a little dolly, didn't she, in a carriage? Well, here you are, darling, all for you. Go on, take it away. <laughs> and now, Grover? Hey, I, how do you know our names? I know all the names of good little boys and girls. Besides, I got this list airmail, remember? Now, here, here's a watch for you, Grover. There. And, Madeline, that's your sled, dear. Go on, take it away. <laughs> Teddy. Here, here's your train. It's not electrical. I thought that might be dangerous, but you can push that around. And here, Ronnie, there are your boxing gloves. And you, Joni, you wanted a dolly in a carriage, too. Well, there it is, darling. It's all yours. Take it away. <laughs> and now, there are presents for the parents under the tree. Well, Merry Christmas, gentlemen. Welcome to the party. We talk to you outside. Oh, sure. What? Police officer. Oh, we'll have to take you in, Charlie. I'm sorry, but... Oh, that's all right. I I know I spent money that wasn't mine. But I heard that those men that I was working for... You can for... tell all that to the magistrate, Charlie. Well, I, oh, I'm, I'm coming along with you, but if I could just have one minute, just just one minute, I've got a last present to hand out, and it, it's an There's awful... There's a charge against you, Charlie. We haven't got time to wait. Joe. For... All right, go ahead. We'll wait. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, folks, uh, could, could I have your attention just a minute, uh, children, too, please? I, uh, there is one last present I've got here, and to me it's the most important because because it's for my little Anna Marie. And she's always been, and I, I think you know the reason why, always been the closest to my heart. Uh, Miss Scarpita, in, in this envelope you'll You'll find some money, at, at least enough to start a fund to get a good doctor and make her legs well. God bless you. And I, I hope they'll do the trick, little sweetheart. And I know it will, because, because you deserve so much to be well. Oh, thank you, Santa Claus. You're a real sweet man, just like my Uncle Dooley. Thank you, Doc. Well... Santa Claus has got to be getting on now. And incidentally, I, I'm going to take your Uncle Dooley with me for just a little while up to the North Pole. Uh, not for very long. I, I just want him to help me get my, my toy shop started, that's all. I'll send him back to you very soon. Uh, how about a Christmas carol? I want you to know something first. I didn't steal all of that money. Some of it was mine for work honestly done. Look, Charlie, you stole some money, and the law says... Wait a minute, Joe. I think you've got the facts a little twisted in this case. Mr. Dooley didn't steal any money. Chief, are you well, all right? The money he used for the presents was collected for deserving children, wasn't it? To make Christmas happy for them? Well, sure, but... Well, it seems to me that Mr. Dooley made Christmas happy for some very deserving children. Don't you think so, Joe? I make it a point never to argue with the boss. Here. I want you to add this to the fund for Anna Marie. With best wishes from... from a friend. Will you do that? Yeah, I'll do that. You're a good friend. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't introduce you to this very nice officer. Mr. Dooley, this is Joe Seidel, and he wants to contribute to Anna Marie's fund, too. Huh? Don't you, Joe? Oh, well, sure, of course, Chief. I said I'd make it a point never to argue with the boss. I hope she gets well real fast. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Chief. And a Merry Christmas to you, Mr. Dooley. I managed to avoid arresting Santa Claus on Christmas Eve. I figured I'd fulfilled the letter as well as the spirit of the law when I took in Ross Pennington and Elma Castle. They'll be on the receiving end of a different kind of charity for a while. The state will furnish their board and lodging 
with a little hard labor thrown in just to remind them that they couldn't get away with their new kind of racket. A racket that was more than just against the law. It was a parasite that fed on one of the finest charities we know, the street corner Santa Claus. I'm sure there aren't any other crooks as low as Pennington and Castle. So during the Christmas season, give freely to the men in the red suits. They're all working hard for legitimate charities. Closing this case now, or rather the courts will, but there'll be others because that's the way the world is built. Remember, there are people who can slap you on the back with one hand and pick your pocket with the other. And it could happen to you. See Racket Squad next week, same time, same station. Step out here a minute. What do you want, Herbie? Uh, look up there, Billy. It's mistletoe. <laughs> Billy Joe, I need you. <laughs> All right, Herbie, what'd you do this time? I got kissed. <laughs> it sure was annoying. Billy Joe. It's Christmas, Mom. Oh, all right. Start getting our Christmas stuff together in the back room. Floyd and Charlie will be along in a minute now. Okay. I'll help you, Billy Joe. Oh, that kid. Stealing a kiss right out here in the store. Oh, Sam, it's Christmas. Remember when you were a boy? Yeah. Yeah, I ain't a boy any longer, Kate. But if I understand this custom of kissing under the mistletoe, there ain't any particular age limit on who can Sam, and who can. you talk too much. <laughs> what happened, Mr. Drucker? I got kissed. <laughs> Kids, all three of you. We got a lot of work to do before dark. Boy, I'll say we have. We got Christmas baskets to pack and presents to wrap and carols to rehearse. And a tree to cut and a mice to string and a sleigh and reindeer to touch up. And the whole who 
Hooterville Cannonball to decorate. I could use a little more pressure, Floyd. Coming right up. Will you stop burning the ties from under this track? Oh, I'm burning the loose ones, Charlie. If you could keep taking up the tires, what's going to hold the rails down? Well, the train's pretty heavy, even without you. <laughs> some ties loose in your head. Oh, oh that's stupid, Charlie. I don't think I'm enough to hurt anything. You've been a saying that for years, and one of these days we're going to find ourselves out there plowing up them fields with our cow catcher. Gee whiz, Charlie, don't be yelling at me so close to Christmas. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Floyd, but you got to admit that Christmas Eve would be a mighty poor time for the cannonball to run off the track. All decorated up, carrying a trainload of carol singers and presents and all. Speaking of presents, what do you got over there in that big package with my name on it? That's a rubber crowbar, so as you can't pry up no more loose ties. <laughs> Smoke on that fire and let's highball it. Why, we might even be on time today. <laughs> Mr. Curtis, what about it? An inspection trip at Christmas time? I'd be glad to work on Christmas, New Year's, any day, if it's for the good of the C and FW Railroad. Oh, now look, Bedlow, I realize you're trying to regain your position as vice president, but nobody expects you to work at Christmas. Well, that's just it. They won't be expecting me. Well, who is they? Do you know of some particular violation of C and FW rules? Yes, I do. And I understand it goes on every year at this time. Well, who is it? What is it? Where? Oh, Mr. Curtis, uh, I think in all fairness, I shouldn't name names or places until I make an on-the-spot personal inspection. Well, speaking as president of the railroad, I've got to admire your devotion to the company. But speaking personally, I think you're a nut. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> well, that report will be on your desk the day after Christmas. Could you please come in, Miss Evans? Merry Christmas, Miss Evans. Mr. Curtis. Did I actually see a smile and, and hear a Merry Christmas from old Scrooge? I mean, Mr. Bedlow? You did. And heaven help Bob Cratchit and Tiny Jam, whoever they may be. Hi, Sam. Hi, Sam. Hey, fellas, where's the rest of the train? Hey, Charlie, we lost the coach. I can see that, Floyd. Did you fix that coupler like I told you? Let's see now, did I or didn't I? Let me think. Just back up and get the coach. We gotta decorate this whole train before dark. Wait a minute. It's coming back to me. Yeah, I didn't fix it. <laughs> How come the air brakes didn't stop us if you connected the air hose? Let's see now. Did I or didn't I? <laughs> you didn't. Yeah, I didn't. Well, you kept hurrying me, Charlie. Fellas, please. Back this thing up and get the coach. Calm down, Sam. We're back in... Where's the train going? The old Floyd forgot to fix the coupler and connect the air hose, and they lost the coach. Poor Floyd. He always gets so excited around Christmas. <laughs> I can see it too, Smokehead. Okay, Floyd, hook up the air hose. Let's get back to Sam. Hurry up, Floyd! Trying to break your burning railroad tide. That one was just laying there, begging to be burned. Well, it's like any other habit, Floyd. You're gonna break it, 
I'd go cold turkey, no tapering off. <laughs> Charlie, sometimes you treat me like a six-year-old child. Sometimes you act like a six-year-old child. Which just shows you can be intelligent when you try. <laughs> Well, you missed it. It was due through here two or three hours ago. Don't tell me it runs on schedule now. Well, it does today. You see, the boys have got to get the train out to the shady rest so Kate and the girls can decorate it tonight, but... Lumpy dog God. This is the first time in 14 years it's been late on Christmas Eve. And it'll be the last. Charlie, that looked like Mr. Bedlow back at the station. What would he be doing here Christmas Eve? Maybe he brought us a present. Lloyd, you are really in bad shape today. <laughs> uh, I thought they'd never get back. Well, hurry up, everybody. Well, you go ahead. I'll lock up. Mister, unless you like pumping a hand car, you better start running for that train. I don't like pumping and I don't like running. What about your taxi? Well, it can't run on the railroad track, and that's the only road. Now, the hand car is right over there. I'm not pumping any hand car. <laughs> trip and a Merry Christmas. Ah, humbug! <laughs> out of here. Billy Joe, you go on up and get tell your sisters and Uncle Joe to get down here on the double and help us. All right, Mom. I'll go help her tell them. Hurry up, boy. It's going to get dark on it. Now, Sam, don't you start yelling at me like Charlie's been doing. It makes me nervous and I forget things. All right, Floyd. Open the door. Charlie yelling at me made me forget to fix the coupling, made me forget to connect the air holes. Floyd, nobody's yelling. It made me forget something else, too. Now, I'll forget what it is. Doggone it. Now, remember? What? Sounds like a cow's in there. Yeah, I was supposed to leave it off at Lon Hawker's place. Christmas present for his wife. <laughs> Lloyd Smoot, we were supposed to deliver that cow someplace. Now, where? You yelled at me again, Charlie. Now, I forget. Lon Hawker's place. That's right, Floyd. See? To Ludie with love from Lon. Here's wishing you a white Christmas. White Christmas. Milk, get it? <laughs> Lloyd, you are the dumbest ash cat that ever shook a grape. I need an ash cat now, Charlie. I'm a baggage wrestler. <laughs> well, wrestle that cow out of the way and give us the decorations. Charlie, hadn't we ought to take this cow back over to Lon's place? We ain't got time now. Charlie, please don't yell at him. He'll forget where he put the decorations. <laughs> Floyd, would you please start handing things out to us? You bet. But Charlie and Sam will have to help you with this cow. <laughs> cow, Floyd. <laughs> Maybe Betty will find him upstairs. Oh, Herbie, will you put these under the tree for us? We've got to find Uncle Joe. Uh, uh, Billy, uh, look up there. It's Christmas. Again? <laughs> no, it's still the same Christmas. Uh, just different mistletoe. Hey, Betty, did 
did you find Uncle Joe? Not yet, Bobby. Well, he knows there's work to do. Look under the bed. That's the first place I looked. <laughs> How about the linen closet? Not there. Well, tell her to try the attic. Try the attic. Will do. Hey, where have you kids been? Looking for you. Where have you been? I've been trying to find you up for half this Santa Claus outfit. Did you get the train all decorated? No, we haven't even started. Maybe I better go back and look some more. Uncle Joe. <laughs> Mom wants you. Down at the train. There's work to do. It's getting late. I've got a lot of work to do on this beard. It's in bad shape. But Mr. Drucker got a brand new one. Midler. <laughs> Betty, we found him. Come on down to the train. Okay. We'll see you down the train, Mr. Carson. Okay, I'll be there right away. <laughs> Where did Floyd put the light bulbs? No telling, Kate. You'll find him around back of the train. Oh, thanks, Jerry. Floyd <laughs> smoked. We got a train to decorate and Christmas carols to rehearse, and here you sit milking a cow. You needed milking, Kate. You wouldn't want her bawling right in the middle of silent nights. <laughs> We're not going to take her along on the train when we go caroling. I don't see any other way to get her over to Lon Hawker's place in time for Christmas. <laughs> Well, all right. Finish up as quick as you can. <laughs> hey, Sam, here you got me a new Santa Claus beard. Yeah. What do you mean, you? I'm Santa Claus this year. You was Santa Claus last year. I was not. Floyd was. Well, what about the year before? That was Pixley Fats. See? It's my turn this year. Well, you can forget it. I got the suit. Not the top half, you ain't. <laughs> so you're the one that hid that. I didn't hide it. I took it home and had my landlady let it out to fit me. Come well, hand it over. I gotta get dressed. Where's my beard, Sam? I, I gave it to Kate. Kate! Kate! Oh, please, fellas, don't make a big thing about who plays Santa Claus. We haven't got time. What is it? Kate, who's gonna be Santa Claus, me or this greasy hog head? Uncle Joe, don't call Charlie that. Oh, that's just railroad talk for engineer. I don't care. I don't like it. All right, who's gonna be Santa Claus, me or this greasy pig head? <laughs> no. Kate, if you let me be Santa Claus, I'll promise you a big, fat gobbler for Christmas dinner. You're always here for Christmas dinner. <laughs> you gotta care for some fresh milk. Uncle Joe, take this up and put it in the icebox. We'll decide about Santa Claus later. You can decide all you want, but I'm it. You got the padding for it, but it's on the wrong side. <laughs> Boys, let's get busy stringing up these lights on the train, huh? Where are the bulbs, Floyd? They're in the baggage car. See, when you don't yell at me, I can remember. Mom! Mom! Betty Jo, you be careful up there. There's someone coming on a handcar from Hooterville. Handcar? Who is it? I can't tell for sure. It looks like Mr. Bedlow. Kate, Kate, look who's popping up the track to spend Christmas with us. My old buddy, Horror Bedlow. You see, Charlie, that was Mr. Bedlow we passed up at the Hooterville station. Oh, fine. With that and pumping 20 miles on a handcar, he's gonna be in a jolly mood. Just leave him to me. I don't need no help to handle Bedlow. Hey, what do you think you're doing to the property of the C and FW Railroad? We're decorating it for the annual Christmas carol sing, Mr. Bedlow. We go all the way across the valley singing and distributing gifts and baskets of food. It's a tradition, Mr. Bedlow. It was a tradition. Now start taking down those lights. Why? Violation of the CNFW rules and regulations. Well, how's old Homer Bedlow? Still looking for a way to get even with us for outsmarting you? No, not anymore. Ah, uh, that's the Christmas spirit. Put her there. Christmas present for me? <laughs> Homer, you shouldn't have done it. That's a legal writ empowering me to seize and hold this train. Homer, oh, you shouldn't have done it. <laughs> hey! Bedlow, you being an educated city man and all, uh, Bobby Joe thought you'd uh, like to hear that beautiful song in Latin. Very nice. Lovely voice, that girl. She might be able to support you. 
after the hotel's closed down, now that the train's gone. You mean Betty, Joe, and Floyd got it away? Oh, no, you don't steal that train on me anymore. Even that clever little engineer daughter of yours can't run the cannonball without this throttle lever. <laughs> <laughs> Monsieur Medlow, you certainly are a brilliant man. <laughs> Billy Joe, more fruitcake for Mr. Bedlow. Uncle Joe, more eggnog. Herbie, hurry with Mr. Bedlow's shoes. Charlie, give Mr. Bedlow his cigar. And Bobby Joe, let's sing another Christmas carol for Mr. Bedlow, this time in English. <laughs> just returned from flying Mr. Bedlow to Hooterville, and he wanted to know if he'd be needing the plane. No, no, tell him to put... Hooterville? Bedlow went there? Yes, sir. He's going to inspect a cannonball. And he can find a thousand infractions. He is going to spoil Christmas for all those wonderful people. That mean, vengeful... Scrooge, sir? That's too good for Bedlow. <laughs> Are you needing the plane then, sir? No, the helicopter. I've got to land close to Shady Rest if I'm going to stop him in time. section hand on his railroad. <laughs> oh, boy. That's all we need now. Nutty Norman, the hobo. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Carson. Remember me, Norman Curtis? Yeah, that's the way I remember you with your hand out. Hungry as usual, I suppose. <laughs> well, I could use some food, but first, do you have a Homer Bedlow here, the CNFW Railroad? Yeah. If you're looking for him to give you a job, you're out of luck. That guy's the original Mr. Me. What has he done? He grabbed the train, that's all. It's the end of the Hooterville Cannonball, the end of Shady Rest, and it's the end of your free handouts. Well, I'd like to talk to him alone. Send him in, will you? Can't you get it through your nutty noggin? Mr. Bedlow's a big shot. He ain't about to waste his time talking to a hobo. You tell him Norman P. Curtis wants him. He'll talk to me. Uncle Joe, hurry up with Mr. Bedlow's... Norman Curtis. Merry Christmas, Kate. Well, I I'm afraid this one isn't going to be a very merry one for us, but you get washed up, and we can at least give you one good hot meal before we close down. You call me Mr. Bedlow? Oh, now it's Christmas Eve. I don't want to burden you with our troubles. From the looks of you, you got plenty of your own. Arson! Where's that Edgar? Coming right up, Mr. Bedlow, sir. I was delayed by this hobo coming to the door. Hobo! Bumming rides in a CNFW railroad, well? No, no, sir, Mr. Bedlow. Well, see that you don't, buddy, because I'm. <laughs> I'm sick. <laughs> Too much eggnog. I was afraid of that. I'll go get the bicarbonate. Uh, Kate. If you two will leave me alone with Mr. Bedlow, I think I know just how to straighten him out. <laughs> if anybody knows how to take care of a drunk, it's a hobo. <laughs> All right, everybody, we can get started now. Here comes Santa Claus. <laughs> Thank goodness that argument between Charlie and Joe got settled with no bloodshed. Yeah, that's the best Santa Claus ever. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Be jolly, Bedlow. <laughs> ho, 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 Merry Christmas. <laughs> Jollier. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. <laughs> Happy New Year. And a uh, Happy New Year! Ho, ho, ho! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, right now. 
nothing you discover. Remember, Christ our Savior, far on Christmas Day. To save us all from Satan's power, when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Red all with bells of holly, fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. Down to now our gay apparel, fa la 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 la. Red all with bells of holly, fa la 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 la. Tis the season to be jolly, fa la 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 la. This has been a film way from Hollywood. The Jack Benny program. Christmas list? Oh, yeah. Now, here it is. Oh, good. Good. Now, look. Oh, Roger, look. As long as both of us are in the store here, uh, I'd like to buy you your Christmas gift now, you see? Because I don't want to duplicate anything. You see, what did I give you last year? A brand new dollar bill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and a lecture on the evils of wine, woman, and song. <laughs> well, that was just a gag, you know. I just, I just did that to make you laugh. I wish you'd have told me I cried all night. <laughs> oh, stop, will you? Now, let's see. Don, uh, right at the top of the list, I got Don Wilson. Gee, I got to get him something nice, too. I don't know, maybe something in the leather goods department. Now, may, maybe a nice wallet, huh? Mm -hmm. Don would like a wallet, yes, wouldn't he? he would. Oh, okay. Yes, sir, what can I do for you? Oh, uh, I'd like to see some wallets, please. All right, we have a large variety here. Oh, all these wallets you see here are $1.98. Well, they look nice. $1.98, Yes, sir. Say, boss, right. here's some better wallets right here. Let's see. Oh, this is, oh, Don would love this one. This is, this that's, is a real nice one. That's genuine cowhide. Cowhide? Yes, sir. Huh? How much is that? $40. <laughs> I think that. 
Tom would like this. He has been with me a long time. Right, I'll take this. Now, uh, wrap it up as a gift and send it to Mr. Don Wilson. 4946 Whitset, Beverly Hills. Hmm? Beverly Hills. Yes, sir. Oh, here's your money. $40. $40. Yes, I'll make a nice package. Yeah, to do that. Wrap it up in a nice Christmas package. Beautiful, beautiful. That's a 10. Let's see, there's 20, 10. There's $40. All right, and, and thank you very much. You're, you're welcome. Oh, wait a minute. Before you put that in, I want to write a nice note. All right. For him. You know, a little card for Don. Just one second. I don't know what to write to him. It's just something kind of cute, I think. Let's see. To Don. <laughs> Look, listen to this, Ron. How's this sound? To Don, this gift is from Jackie. Oh golly, oh shucks. I hope that you like it. It costs 40 bucks. <laughs> Isn't that good? Yeah, wouldn't it tough to get around for a dollar ninety-eight? <laughs> there you are. Now put this in with that. And don't be, and, let, and see that Mr. Wilson gets it before Christmas. Won't you? Yeah, you bet I will. I'll make a beautiful package for you. Don't oh, you worry about it. I'll thank take you. care of it. Thank you very, thank very you. much. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Now, let's see. Well, I got Don all set. Now, I want to get something for Mary. I think I'll get something in the jewelry department for Mary, huh? Oh, say, boss, uh, do you mind if I do some of my shopping now? No, no, go right ahead, and I'll see you later. Now, let's see. I wonder where the, where the jewelry department... Oh, Mr. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me, are you the floor walker here? Well, what do you think I am with this carnation? A float in the Rose Parade? <laughs> I always run in. How can you keep a job as a floor walker? My father owns the store. <laughs> oh, and you're working your way up, huh? You know, I started as president. <laughs> If you have a question for a floor walker, you better ask it fast. I have no question, and I'm not going to ask anything. I'll find it myself. Phew. Always run into him every place. Now, let's see. I wonder where... Let's see, for Mary, I wonder where the jewelry department is. I got to get... The jewelry department? Yeah. Right over there. <laughs> I hope they still have a nice selection. <laughs> oh, there it is, over there. How do you do, sir? Merry Christmas. May I help you? Yes, I'd like to uh, look at a watch, please. I want a watch. Uh, for a man, a woman, or a dog? <laughs> a dog? Well, this is Beverly Hills, you know. <laughs> yeah, well, I... I'd like a lady's wristwatch. I don't know any dogs. <laughs> well, we have a very large selection. Now, here's a lovely watch for $120. Yeah, $120. Mm -hmm. How much is this one here? Oh, well, that's only $12, but it's a very nice watch. $12, huh? Oh, that's a beauty. I can hardly tell the difference here. I'll take this one here for, for $12. All right, fine. There you are. Now, wait a minute. There's 10, one, two, there's... There you are. There's $12. your $12. Thank you. Gee, this is a... I can't tell the difference. This is really a beautiful watch, isn't it? It certainly is. Mm -hmm. And it has an unbreakable crystal. An unbreakable crystal? Yes. Yeah. Well... Here, try it out. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I oh, go ahead. <laughs> go on, go ahead. Hit it with the hammer and see. Oh, well, all right. <laughs> I can't return your money. Oh, you can, eh? Well, I'm going to get my money back. Well, no, there's no, going no, to be just something a else. minute, just a minute. Uh, oh, Mr. Nelson. Yeah. It's him again. What is it, Miss Bally? Well, this man just broke a watch with a hammer, and he wants his money back. Well, of course I broke the watch, but she told me to. She told you to? Yeah. Well, good heavens, don't you have a mind of your own? <laughs> I've got a mind of my own. But this young lady... Young? Why, she's 42 if she's a day. We're not talking about that. Now, look at I want my money back. Oh, all right, Miss Valens. Give him back his money before he bites somebody. What? You're breathing on my carnation. Oh, get out of here! There you are. 
What a sore loser. <laughs> well, this is certainly a fine store to do business with. You walked in, Lotus Blossom. Nobody dragged you. <laughs> oh, quiet. Well, couldn't get a gift for Mary. Anyway, I got Don all set. Now, let's see. Oh, I don't know, that card I sent to Don. I don't know. It didn't seem dignified enough for Christmas. Yeah, I think, I, I think I'll change the card. Oh, clerk. Yes, sir? Look at I, um, you know, I'm the fellow who was here just a little while ago. I bought yeah. that $40 wallet. Yeah. You remember that? Well, uh, I'd like to uh, change the card. But, but, mister, I... I've already got it wrapped with, with ribbon and, and pencil and, <laughs> and little bells and, and, and holly. Yeah, I know, but I'm sorry, but look, just, I'm sorry, but you'll have to unwrap it because I want to change the card. But, 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 mister, look, look please, I'm a customer. Uh, now, unwrap it. Oh, all right. But it, it's, it's so pretty, it's a, it's a dirty shame. I know. <laughs> such a nice ribbon and everything. Yeah, I know, I just have to change and, the card. And, yeah, I, I like the card you had in yeah, the Yeah, but I have play. to change it. <laughs> I thought it was very witty. All right, now this, this is much better. To Don, a very Merry Christmas from Jack. Huh? All right, yeah. now put this in with the gift and wrap it. Yeah, I'll wrap it, I'll wrap it. Good. <laughs> a very original card to Don, a very Merry Christmas. <laughs> May I help you, young man? Help me? Well, yes, you've been standing in front of this counter for 10 minutes. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm confused. Well, that's understandable. You're confused because it's Christmas time, because you have the Christmas spirit, you're buying Christmas presents, and there's so many different things to look at. Well, that explains why I'm confused in December, but what about the other months? <laughs> I wouldn't know. I'm standing behind this counter because in a moment of wild enthusiasm, I sold my pants. <laughs> See, I, I, I'm, I gotta buy something for my mother and father, and gosh, I, I don't know what to get them. Well, maybe I can help. Looking at you, I can just picture your mother. Small, petite, gentle, with a kindly smile for everyone. Spends most of the time sitting in a rocking chair, knitting. That's my father, and I'll try to guess my mother. <laughs> Boy, does she make him toe the mark. <laughs> You mean your father's afraid of your mother? Oh, everybody's afraid of my mother. Boy, you know, when I was born, the stork left me a block away from the house. <laughs> it's a good thing I knew the address. <laughs> hey, you know, while I'm here, maybe I ought to get something for my boss, Mr. Benny. Well, how about this silk shirt? Oh, yeah, that's nice. That'll be fine. Hi, Dennis. Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Hi, doing your Christmas shopping, eh? Yeah, I was just gonna buy you a gift and you had to walk up and spoil the whole thing. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you were buying me a gift. Now you'll have to close your eyes. All right, like this? <laughs> okay, mister, you can wrap it up now. And put it in a shoebox so you won't know it's a shirt. <laughs> Boy, that was a close one. Yeah, it certainly was. Look, that is, you bought me the shirt, did you? Now, why don't you go home before you get lost? Oh, I can't. I'm working here. In this store? Yeah, they have me singing Christmas songs. Here? I can't live on what you pay me. <laughs> oh, gosh, I, I gotta go now. I gotta sing one song. <laughs> can't live on what I pay him. <laughs> Then how the reindeer loved him as they shouted out with glee. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, you'll go down in history. Then one foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose 
so bright. Won't you guard my sleigh tonight? Then how the reindeer loved him as they shouted out with glee. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, you'll go down in history. <laughs> Gee, I can understand them wanting Dennis to sing here. Voice is so beautiful. Now, let's see what else Jack, do I have to get. Jack! Yes? Not you. I'm talking to the elevator starter. You're not the only Jack in the world, you know. <laughs> I never ran into a guy like Hey, he's right. I'm not the only Jack in the world. That gift I bought for Don Wilson. <laughs> When I signed the card, I only put down my first name. Gee, $40 gift, uh, an elevator starter can get the credit for it. <laughs> I better change that gift. <laughs> oh, clerk, clerk. Yes, sir, what can I do? Him <laughs> again. Yes, yes, look at, I, I want to change that card again. Oh, no, 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 no. First you buy the gift. Then you write the card, then I wrap the gift. Then you change the card, then I unwrap the gift, then you rewrite the card. Then, then I wrap the gift again, and now you want to write another card! I can't help you. You'll have to, you'll have to un un unwrap the gift. I'm sorry. It, it, I already sent it down to the delivery room. Well, then you'll have to go down and get it. All right, all right, I'll go get it. I, I haven't run into anybody like you in 20 years. Oh, why did the governor have to give me that pardon? <laughs> about that. Just All bring me right, my I'll pen. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> no one's a red nose reindeer. Then run away he goes. Well, sir, what can I do for you? Oh, 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 I'm trying to get a guest for my boss. Your boss, eh? Well, huh? what would you like? Well, I don't know. Maybe we've got a suggestion. Well, uh, what kind of man is your boss? Is he the athletic type? No. Or is he the, uh, the intellectual type? <laughs> Well, no. <laughs> the executive type. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, uh, perhaps the outdoor type. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, uh, well, perhaps he's the playboy type. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I'm afraid there isn't very much left. That's him. <laughs> Mr. Uh, I, I found her. I, I found a pack. Now, no, no, please, l let's not have any more trouble. No. With, with all that beautiful wrapping and everything. Yeah. Oh, you, you got the card ready? Yeah. And hey, listen, I, I changed the poem. I want you to hear it. Uh, all listen. right. To Don, your pear-shaped tones, many announcers ape. But no one can ape your pear-shaped shape. <laughs> Clever. I think so. I think yeah. so, too. Attention, please. Santa and his reindeer have just arrived in the workshop. All you children, come up, tell him what you want for Christmas, and get your lollipops. <laughs> Peppermint, the same as last year. <laughs> because they're the largest auto insurance company in the world, you know. Uh, I know, I know. Next! <laughs> and think, I may save 10 20 $30 or more with State Farm. And they have 7,500 agents to give me hometown service wherever I travel. All right, all right, anything you want. Here, here's your, here's your lollipop. Now go. Oh, oh, oh. Now, now remember, Santa. Da, 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 da. I'll remember, I'll remember. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Funny, that card 
I made out to Don Wilson. I can't find it. I wonder where it is. <laughs> oh, Clark. Clark. Yes. Now what? <laughs> now what? <laughs> I made out a card here for Mr. Wilson, and I can't find it. Don't worry about it. I found the card, I put it in the package, I wrapped it as a gift, and I sent it down to the delivery room. But I forgot to sign it. Something for my sister Florence. I think I'll get some lingerie for her. Think, all right. Uh, pardon me, would you wait on me, please? Do uh, why not? Your money's as good as anybody. <laughs> to see something nice and in, in silk lingerie. Uh, certainly. Uh, what size do you wear? <laughs> it's not for me. Oh. It's for my sister. Oh, I see. Now, what size? 34. Uh, 34, okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the whole box of... Oh, this, huh? Yeah. It's all that. That's nice lingerie, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Hello, will you lay it out? Just lay out the yeah, lingerie, uh, please. Just a minute. I mean, why are you wearing gloves? Oh, touching that stuff with my bare hands makes me a nervous wreck. <laughs> what? Especially the black ones. Well, look, I haven't got all day. Look, just show me size 34, okay, some lingerie. Oh, here's a nice little garment. A genuine, pure silk nighty. Uh-huh. Well, this might be nice. That's Let's pretty. See. Let's see this. Oh, what are these loops for here? <laughs> the loops? Yeah, the loops. The loops. <laughs> now, what are the loops for here? Oh, when you go to bed, you hook them over your toes so the nightgown don't creep up on you. Is this uh, one? It's fifteen dollars. All right, I'll take this. Oh, thank right you, here. sir. Yes, fifteen dollars. Yes, sir. There you are. Ten. There's five. Thank now I want you, you to send it to my sister, sister Florence. Yes. Florence Fenchel. Florence Fenchel. Chicago, Illinois. Chicago. Does she live near the loop? Yeah, the loop. loop. <laughs> She's about three blocks from the loop. <laughs> yeah, here it is. Oh, There's her address. You, now send her a nice. Kiss this kid, Yes, sir. How yeah. do you like that? Right in the loop. <laughs> well, let's see. Oh, I must I mustn't forget to sign Don's card. No. Yeah, I, I know. I, I know. 
crap, crap. Uh, yeah. 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 Oh, it's a $40. Yeah, it's right. $40, right. that's right. It's that's right. When I pay $40, I want it to be right. Right, right. $40. $40. <laughs> Where did Rochester go? Get him! Get him, boss! Oh! Get him. Rochester, I think I'm through here for today. We can go home now, huh? Oh, do we have to go right now, boss? Why, you're through shopping, aren't you? Well, I got you a gift, but I think I want to get you something a little better. A little better gift for me? Mm -hmm. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Rochester. That's ridiculous. It isn't what a gift costs. You know, it's the spirit in which it's given. I guess you're right. Well, of course I'm right. What's the difference what you spend for a present? It's the thought that counts. What's it worth? It's fifty dollars or forty dollars or a dollar ninety-eight. It doesn't. <laughs> Rochester, wait right here. I'll be. I'll be right back. Clerk. Don't, don't, don't tell me he's going to change, change the card again. No, 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 that's not important. I want to change the wallet. What? Instead of the $40 wallet, I want the one for $1.98. <laughs> Young fellow. Let's see, a dollar ninety-eight from forty dollars. I got some change. Come on, Rochester. Let's get out of this crazy store, huh? Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first. the show. I want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas. And I'll see you next week for Lipton Tea.